So one of the most often questions asked of me is, how do I edit my photographs? What software do I use to edit my photographs? So today I'm here to tell you I use Lightroom and sometimes Photoshop if I need to go heavy handed into set. So today I am going to show you step by step on how I edit my photographs. And also I am going to upload the same photographs, the raw file, that you can download absolutely free of charge so you can follow along step by step. Now the tools that I am going to use are all available on the Lightroom Classic version or the newer Lightroom version. So you can use your mobile phone to also follow along. So right, without further ado, let's get into it. So as you see, I've imported the photo into Lightroom. This is the photo that we are going to edit. So now the first thing I will go into is to change my profile. So everyone has this profile, the Adobe Color Profile. So there will not be a specific camera profile. It makes the playing field quite even. So one of the first things that I will do is to check the white balance. This is a bit too magenta for me. So I will turn down to magenta to about minus 13 there. So it's a bit more neutral. It's a bit greenish, so I will push it up a bit more. Park it somewhere like so. Look at the white balance, see how much I can do to keep it neutral. There you go, it's just a little bump for it to be warmer. Now, I like my photographs to look like film. So I don't go into anything else other than presence. But turn down the clarity by a bit, like so. Turn down the haze, so it gives you that dreamy, dreamy, hazy feeling. And then turn down texture, like so. Right, now after that, I will be taking care of the primaries. What I mean by primaries is exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, and what have you. So this is exposed quite well, but I want to push it up a little bit, see what it does. I like that. Park it at 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3. Turn down the contrast a little bit because I will be adding contrast in the color tone later on. I mean the tone curve. So we will be counteracting that using the tone curve later on. I will show you that. Now I want to turn down the highlights to control the um, clipping. So it's not overexposed. Highlights, I will park it somewhere about there. Shadows, I want to lift up the shadows a little bit. Again, I will be adding the contrast back later on so I can see all the detail on it, somewhere out there. And then in order to compensate for it, I will also be turning down the blacks because we lifted the shadows. There you go. If you hold Option, you can see... If you hold Option, you can see where you're clipping the blacks as you're holding it. You don't want any black spots to appear, so I will be parking it somewhere there. Same for the whites as well. I like to turn down the whites quite a little bit because we will be doing some masking later on. So as you can see, you've lost quite a bit of contrast. This is before, this is after, but you've neutralized everything. You've made it a bit hazier. You've made it a bit more film-like. So now we're going down to the color contrast. I will put a spot here spot here, a spot here, or create an S-tone. Don't worry, it will look like shit before it looks good. Push up the mid-tones a little bit, push this up, and then turn down the highlights to give it a bit of a highlight roll-off, like film. And then what you can do is right-click on here, copy the channel settings, go to the green channel, Paste channel settings, the blue channel, and paste channel settings. Right, as you can see, we've boosted up the contrast. Now, this is a bit too bright, so I will be turning down the exposure, again, balancing it out again. And then the shadows, I have too much shadows here. I will go to the first tone curve, the parametric tone curve, and push the shadows up a little bit to reveal some of the details. And then 
One of the things that I like to do is to turn down the vibrance a little bit because it is oversaturated. Park it somewhere about there. So you went from here to here. So you can stop here. It already looks all right, but then I want to be a bit more surgical in the colors. So I will go down to HSL. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. The hue changes the color of the reds. If you turn it to the right, it turns a bit more orangey. If you turn it to the left, it turns more towards magenta. Saturation speaks for itself. As you can see, as I'm playing with the sliders, you see the reds going, absolute, going absolutely mental uh, and taking the, way, the reds completely. Luminance is how bright the colors are. You need to understand that if you push luminance, you will lose a bit of saturation. So it's sort of like a balancing game. So you can, you know, just play around with the settings or just be surgical about it. Always add it with intention. You don't want to push around the sliders just to have fun. So now you know what HSL does. We are going to use that to color grade the image, but not too much. So it stays neutral, but you still get sort of like film-like qualities, cinematic-like qualities. So we go to reds, we can push the hue of the reds to about here, change it to a bit orange, shift it so it's a bit orangey, go to saturation, because it's so saturated, it's too saturated right here, we can turn down the saturation a little bit, like so, and then turn down the luminosity just a bit, so it isn't too bright. Orange, you need to be careful about orange because it affects the skin tone. If you push it too far to the right, you will make everyone look like the Hulk. If you push it to the left, well, you can see for yourself. Right, I don't want to touch the hue because I feel that the skin tone is all right. I just want to turn down the saturation a little bit. Like so. It's not much, but I like it there. Now, yellows. It will affect the trees in the background. If you look here. So I want to add a bit of hue. I want to shift the hue a little bit. It's not adding anything. It's just shifting it around. Saturation. I want to turn it down a little bit. And then luminance. I want to shift it down a little bit as well. Go down to green. Plus 20 right here. I am looking at the trees as I am shifting the value, so down the saturation a little bit because it's too saturated. Like quite a lot actually. And then turn down the luminance because it's too bright. Somewhere there. Aqua. I don't think there's any aqua in this picture, so I will just slam the saturation down. It's probably not affecting anything, but I just don't want to have any color presence that I don't need. With blue, obviously you're affecting the jeans, the denim over here, so we can shift it around also. So I want to turn it down to minus five. Saturation to minus 25, so it's a bit more grayish instead of um, being bright and colorful. Luminance, I want to brighten it up a little bit. There you go. Purple, you will have a bit of purple here. It also affects the denim as well. And you, it will affect, I see a bit of purple in the um, jacket, in the gray here. So we're going to try to neutralize it a bit. So what I will do is to shift the hue towards red. So a bit more neutral. Saturation, bring it down to minus 50 somewhere here and then adjust it a bit as I go along. I'm always looking at the jacket, that grey jacket, see how much I'm affecting it. And then luminance, I want to bring it up a little bit. If it affects anything at all, just a dust a bit over here. Magenta, I don't think I want to shift it around. I will turn down the saturation though get rid of a bit of the magenta off my camera and then turn up the luminance like so. 
Right, as you can see, you've already went from this to this. You're affecting the greens, you're affecting the denim, you're balancing out the colors in the photograph itself. You can't stop here. It's already done, but then I like to take it a step further by adding quite a bit of grain to the image to give it that filmic grain look. Zoom in if you want to see the difference. Somewhere about there. Sharpening. I like to do masking. So on Mac, I just hold Option and I shift the slider to just affect the parts of the image that I want sharpened. I disable the profile corrections because I'm using the Light Lens Lab Alcan in this image. All right, you might be asking me why I'm not using the color grading tab because I like to reserve the color grading tab to make a certain look. For example, if I want to make it a bit more cinematic, I will shift a bit of teal into the shadows and then green on the highlights. So I'll give you a look, but then that's not what I'm going for in this image. Like so. So right, it gives you this cinematic look, it gives you this very, very stylized look, but that is not what I'm going for in this image. But it's completely up to you. You can add your teal and orange or what have you. It's your image, just do whatever you want with it. Now, the next step is the most exciting bit. It's my favorite bit, actually. So it's masking. It, masking will draw your viewer's eye towards wherever you want. So obviously in this image, the subject is the old man giving out food on the street. So this is going to be very basic. The first thing I will do is take a radial mask and then make sure it's on the subject. Somewhere about that. You want to, and then you want to invert this. And then play around with the feathering so that you include the most important bits of the image. And you turn down the sides so it draws you towards your subject. Now, as you as I am lowering down the exposure of the sides, creating a veneer, I like to shift a bit of green in the sides because I tend to feel that as you turn down the image, you turn down the exposure, you increase the magenta as well. So you go from this to this. Right, so that's the first mask that I will do. The second thing that I will do is to accentuate the light source, is to make the, is to exaggerate the light source. I like to zoom in, I like to zoom in, find out where the light is coming from. This tells me that the light is coming from this way. I take another radial gradient. I will do sort of something like this. Turn up the feathering, increasing the exposure. but not that much. And then I will go to dehaze, turn down dehaze, add a bit more depth and atmosphere, soften it, up a bit, soften it up a bit by decreasing clarity. And then I like to lift up the, sh the uh, blacks using the curves quite a little bit. And then finally, I will be adding a bit more color by pushing in a bit of yellow in here. So there you go. And then because we have sort of like a foreground over here, which is quite distracting, I will do a linear gradient, push that up like so, pull it down a little bit, decrease the exposure, turn down the blacks, and then push down tint. Final thing, I will go into my select subject. So in Lightroom Classic, there's something called select person, but if you're on mobile, I think the only thing that you can do is to select subject. So I will not be using the select people feature, but then I will do a rough brush to delete the uh, places where I don't want my masking to be at. Obviously we can go into a lot of detail doing this, but I will not be doing that currently. 
So right here, that's my Wrath Mask. So I just want to select these two people. So I will turn up the whites a little bit to add more attention to them and then go down the clarity and add a bit of clarity. You really want to be careful with clarity because if you bump it up too much, it will look like this, which will honestly just make it look terrible. So I will just add a slight bit of clarity. And basically, there you go. We're almost done. I like to go to switch it to black and white to check the exposure of my subjects. I still feel that this woman is a bit distracting. So what I will do is to add a brush, sort of like a rough brush over here. Turn down the exposure a little bit so it doesn't take away attention from this guy. And then add a bit of a brush. Brush over this guy's face, this man's face. Sorry, not this guy. I'm being quite disrespectful. Turn up the exposure a little bit and then bring it back to color. Check the crop. Pull it down a little bit. And then we are basically done. So we went from this to this in a few steps. So right, again, you can go down to the description below. I have uploaded this raw file in a Google Drive and you can edit it, follow along the steps. Write in the comments below what questions you have. Remember to like, follow and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one.